to see you again. It's been, we last chatted during, oh, COVID, okay. long ago. So much has changed since then. Um, thank you for sending me a PDF of your book. My copy is still coming from Amazon. And, uh, oh, I lost my page of questions. One day. You're so, how long did it take to put together karate for mental health? Too long. Um, <laughs> Too long. <laughs> putting it together wasn't a problem. The, um, my wife recently changed the job, so she's super busy with um, work. So, mm. my English is not good to be put in a book as it is. So, it needs to be a converted and bettered by somebody who actually speaks English and knows karate. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, it took over a year just to correct the English and put the grammar properly. But it's done. So, Well done. You are three books ahead of me. So <laughs> I know how hard it is to, to write and produce. So I have lots of interesting questions because oh. this is an area you and I both feel very passionate about, how karate uh, dovetails with um, mental health. And I very much relate to your idea of the anxious black belt. I myself had a, had a funsy small little anxiety attack this morning. I'm over it, but you know, these things don't go away just because you think you've got a handle on them. Yeah. So, um, you know, I really liked your accommodation. Uh, one of your students you talk about is HJ and she obviously self-harmed yeah. and you allowed her to wear what sounds like a rash guard or one of those long sleeve things under her jersey, um, under her gi. What are the reporting duties in the UK if you suspect self-harm in students? Uh, do you have uh, safeguarding that you have to follow? Is it different for adults or kids? I'd love to hear your processes. So I, do, I don't ditch kids, but it's definitely uh, reporting uh, to self-harm. This was uh, self-harm in the past. So mm. she was under the treatment of um, Oak Leaf. So I work mm. with her at that uh, company. Uh, charity so there's not much reporting for me but yes you okay. should be reporting if if you suspect that there's a route of um, reporting it you can uh, either speak directly with them if there is a managers on site you speak with the managers and you can take it up with the um, different authorities and stuff like that so it is South Africa's a little bit behind in this it's only now that safeguarding is starting to be put into place in karate um, I've got my own protocols that I've been working on with Shea, um, which I looked at mostly. I see in the UK, safeguarding protocols are very, uh, on every single karate instructor's website, I've noticed that there's safeguarding uh, protocols when they work with kids. It's, it's, it's not a legal obligation. Uh, oh, okay. It's a good practice. Um, they try to be, uh, karate in UK is not regulated, really. You've got um, hmm. hundreds of governing bodies. But there's no, you can buy the black belt and start teaching tomorrow yeah. to a insurance. But it's a, it's a right direction move and more of the governing bodies creating policies. So like for us, the um, British Combat Association got their own policies. You, you download, you modify them to your club and is the route of reporting to, to the organization that they get up with appropriate um, authority. If it's, you know, dangerous, you can, they go to police. Like that. So you've got the means of contact somebody to seek help, but but okay. it's not not much regulated. It's now the movement towards the regulation of it. That's interesting. That it's a bit of the wild west. I thought with the UK being such a stickler for bureaucracy that um, karate would be tightly regulated there. I, I thought so as well when I moved to UK because in Poland now actually it's changed to the model from UK. But when I was in UK course for inst instructing so you have to have a course to start teaching and then you have to have a specialization for karate and when i came to uk they said well what's that paper so you don't need anything just go and teach yeah and that leads to so many problems but so that's for another video um so you is the noah in your book noah legal by any chance yes no legal yeah no way. Like the fact that he talks about imposter syndrome, like I look at his YouTube channel and his content and he's not someone I would associate with having imposter syndrome. And I know I have it all the time, even though mm. like statistically, like one of my videos is on nearly 300,000 views. So obviously what I have to teach has value. 
but I often feel like they're going to catch me out and they'll be like, haha, you dropped your yellow bulb. Here it is. Um, how do you, do you often feel like you have imposter syndrome? And when you do, how do you deal with it? Every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, this is a funny thing because we are perceived as a teachers because I think when you, at least for me, when I put the gear on, I'm a different person in a way. Mm-hmm. I have to be confident. I am confident. I feel confident. And you go and do the job. Um, I speak, spoke with many people, including Noah, Iana Bernafi, and they had the same. Mm-hmm. I think that you have to realize that you know you you are teaching, and there is uh, 40, 50 people yeah. who want that knowledge from you, and they're willing to pay in some cases for you to be there. That means you are a valuable asset to them, right? You're doing something for your community, and I think mm-hmm. that as a, as a service, so I'm giving back my knowledge to everybody, and in that way I can overcome. And you just have to realize that, you know, if so many people tell you you're good, they're probably not lying. Yeah. I mean, they're probably, yeah, they're all in, there's a part of you that rationally knows it's not a conspiracy, like they actually trust you and believe in you. But I'm shocked that Ian Abernethy, who I also, as a sensei, I look up to a great deal, Mm. who I'd love to collaborate with one day. He does not strike me as someone who has imposter syndrome, so... It's well, reassuring to hear. It's better than having Dunning-Kruger syndrome, you know, where you don't know how incompetent you are. Exactly. Um, <laughs> there's a there's a channel, I'm not even going to give his name because I really don't want to send him traffic, but he is, like, so arrogant. He's like, I've got the one true secret and they can't stop me. I'm an alpha karate instructor. I'm like, dude, do you need to slow your roll? Ah, oh, Mad Razorback, good morning. And Barbara, good morning. So nice to see you in the channel. Um. So I have a student just like your student, Noah, who was incredibly shy and has grown into himself through karate and helping other people. For the instructors that are watching, how can they make their dojo a sanctuary for those who feel like they don't belong? Uh, so for, for me, it is showing my own vulnerability. Whoever comes to my dojo, I'm the first to welcome them and, and kind of uh, start a conversation with that. You know, I understand this is a very stressful to decide to step into the dojo, yeah. but people who you know are dressed differently, have a different kind of mannerism, they're probably fighting a lot, so they might look intimidating. And stepping through that door, it's it's super stressful. So I always welcome them and, and explain that you know I suffer with uh, an anxiety, I've been stressed. Everybody's welcome, and then all my team kind of naturally happens that comes and chat as well. So we don't have we never have a groups. We all together yeah. one big group, and then everybody welcomes everybody, and then we take care of uh, people and try to show that uh, you know we all humans. We all have our issues. I explain, you know, we've got Danny who is autistic, so I explain, you know, be careful with that person yeah. because he's he, he. We never know how he's gonna take into the person new person coming in. Sometimes mm-hmm. he's open, ninety nine point nine percent, but sometimes he gets overwhelmed and says like, "Oh, I don't yeah. want to train with that person because." And he walks off. So we try to accommodate person and make make them feel comfortable. And we are not very strict dodgers, so we've got very mm. rare And I think that's the that's the key. It comes from the top, right? Because I'm relaxed. Yeah. Relaxed. So. Now, the, I think there's there needs to be more of a space that actually brings me to um, another question. The, my, actually, my next question. Um, I often think about this idea of who gets to be a black belt and who gets to be an instructor. Um, And it's clear from your conversations with your students that you are a beloved instructor, that you make them feel welcome. But Mm. um, on the surface, you and I don't look like real karate instructors and that we don't have the big build. Mm. We're not incredibly athletic. (laughs) Hi, (laughs) Chol. But we both deal with Chols. I often, the other day, someone's like, where did you buy your black belt from in the comments? And there's this idea that there's only a certain type of person who's allowed to be a sensei because they're powerful and they've got the look and they've got the vibe. Yeah, we should actually just uh, show them the troll. So <laughs> what do you think defines success as a karate instructor now? If it's not Ninth Dan, Hanshi, my lord and master karate instructor. I, I think for me, success is that my students, uh, A, speak well for me. I, I had mm-hmm. times we went for dinners. Do you oh. want to be on YouTube? This is Sensei Le. Come say hi. Hi Hansel. Sensei Le. There we go. Hello. So you're not really allowed to be on the internet. Come. All right. Say hi. Say bye. 
Mummy's on YouTube. I feel like that BBZ. Mummy responding to a question. Go on, JJ and Mikey. JJ and Mikey is on the YouTube button. Go ask Daddy, please. I'll be out in about 20 minutes or so. Mummy, which one is this my one. Oh, my gosh. Uh, okay, yes, right. this one. The one that says YouTube. Okay, so, if I all press right. it. You press it, and then you speak to the microphone, and you say JJ and Mikey. JJ and Mikey. <laughs> okay, close the door behind you, baby. Or not. Uh, don't, Thank don't, you. <laughs> don't tell me. No, no. I've been saying JJ and Mikey all the time. Oh, my gosh. I hate <laughs> And Mikey so much. I, all the Minecraft channels, I genuinely don't get it. I, I felt your pain. Uh, <laughs> between JJ and Mikey... What? <laughs> my phone decided to go for a... My phone decided to go for a little ride there. But these are the things in the moment I think that make us relatable. I'm not exactly a Karate by Jesse, Uncamp kind of level of a professional. Ah, uh, who cares? If you oh, okay. that matters. I, I love what we do. For, for me, um, you know, uh, the, how my students talk about me, people who I met through the seminars and mm -hmm. stuff um, is a measure of success, right? So we went on competition and one of my students said, oh, the guy is there. That's, that's what makes me happy, right? I... <laughs> <laughs> Like I know you, baby. I need you. Remember, I made a deal with you. If you let me do my YouTube, I will give you an ice cream. I can't do it. Okay. Go get your phone via the router and watch TV on your phone. Okay. Thank you. Bribery and corruption. Same tactics. No, exactly. It's, it's not, I think we look at success often in terms of money and numbers, but I think the impact, you know, you never get to know about the lives you saved. Mm, exactly. Um, I mean, if you're lucky, you do. They come back to you and they're like, yeah, Sensei, what you said was so motivating and changed my life. But we don't get that feedback very often. Mm. The, the other, other thing, actually, Danny, who is autistic, I said he just passed his grade yes. two weeks ago. Oh, um, wonderful. I was thinking there's two routes, right? Because he's on the autism spectrum, he sometimes yes. has goals set up and that goal is achieved, he drops the interest. But he said to me, oh, yeah. now I'm setting my goal for a second down. So that continuation that he achieved what he planned to achieve, that was always, you know, I want to have a black belt for 10 years. I want to have a black belt. Black belt. He achieved it and he wants to still be back. He wants to start teaching. He actually started teaching with me yesterday. Yes. Uh, oh, fantastic. And, you know, it's it just that continuation that he wants to stay. That means that environment is okay and, and knowledge is there. Mm -hmm. and training is there. And, you know, he's really, really uh, part of the group and, it doesn't stand out as a somebody who is behind or something like that. So yeah. but that, that's how the, the feeling about it right now. I feel accomplished when people coming back training with me. And as well, when they're going out to different dojos, then can uh, I'm not embarrassed, right? It's yeah. They are my um, business cards, let's say, in, in that way. So where they go, they represent me and I have nothing to be ashamed of. And that makes me happy. Absolutely. I think, um, what's that thing, um, that line from Shawshank Redemption, it's a bit, you can put your head down at the end of the day and be happy with what you did. Um, and so Barbara just uh, chimed in, this karate got me out of bed and out of my depression. We miss you, Bob. Um, unfortunately, you know, she's an incredibly dedicated student, but the injuries took over. But we know that, and she knows that the doors are open and when she recovers, She's always welcome back. And for me, karate um, gave me something to... Uh, often your, your students in your interviews talk about how karate gives you a break from yourself. Mm. Because you can't really think about yourself. Um, oh, Mary Stevens. Thank you very I much. I watch that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so, um, to give you an idea, I've always dealt with depression or have had depression, but I only actually got it medicated when I was 30. But in my 20s, um, one of the ways that karate saved me from myself, I, because it was untreated, I'd come home, I'd lie on the couch, go to sleep, wake up, eat something, go back to sleep, and then just sleep all the time. And eventually, my instructor was like, get your ass to the dojo. You belong here, not at home. Mm -hmm. And having a community to go to, and this is my instructor before Shay, this is Mary Jameson. 
And she held me accountable and made it clear that I was missed at the dojo when I was in my, my blue period. So having that dojo and having that community, and especially now in society, we're running out of community. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm sure you're familiar with the concept of a third space, somewhere that's not home and not work, mm-hmm. that you can, so that you could be, usually that place is filled by libraries or sports centers, but those things, I don't think it's as much a problem in the UK. Um, but I know our American uh, followers, and I see Mad Razor, who must be up at like two in the morning to be on this live stream, which we are grateful. Um, they often talk about how kids in America don't have that third space because there's not a lot of parks, there's not a lot of places you could go for free uh, to go and meet people. And now, usually that role used to be filled by church for a lot of people, but as people and young people are moving away from the church, where do you go to meet people? So the dojo as that third space and as a place for improved mental health. <laughs> 4 a.m. Max is sleeping. <laughs> Give Max a scratch from me, that brave little lion of a doggo. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if, if you feel that the third dojo is a good third space for people. Yeah, for sure. You know, we, we the, the sp- you need to have a break from uh, homework and, and that sports filling that gap, or well, any activity, really. So for, for me, you know, Dojo is my preferred choice, but any sport really gives you that. If you've got the non-judgmental environment, that's gonna support you, right? Dojo can be really bad, bad if you go into the yeah. play. People are gonna be put, putting you down, exploiting you, and abusing you. There is yeah. no, not a safe space, isn't it? So whichever, whichever activity you choose, you need to look for that supporting environment and socializing so one of our projects is karate for uh, elderly or mm-hmm. not I'm, oh that's so important i'm gonna be told, told off for saying elderly um and we do a Old, elder party. adults yeah we're gonna have we have <laughs> a, a tea and coffee after and this is very oh, lovely because they're creating community so we started with individuals and now we have a group that people going to marketplaces together trips and, and stuff like that so mm. you're creating that supportive structure you're an instigator but then the students take over and creating their own bonds and friendships mm. and stuff like that so that's what i enjoy kind of in a helping way but any sport any I do think that, like, we've got some wonderful friendships that have started and blossomed in the dojo and lasted years. Um, but there were t- there's now more research coming out that loneliness is just as bad for you as cancer. Yeah. Um, that it takes years off your life if you're alone. And I think what you're doing with elder adults is so important um, because they're often the most... I think it's... All, we have a different thing in South Africa um, amongst our black communities because of the spirit of Ubuntu together we are one and you, I am you and you and me and they don't neglect their elderly in the sense that I think often European cultures do where it's like okay stick them in an old age home and leave them there like yeah. that would be unthinkable in uh, Zulu and Kosa cultures to just abandon your elderly but I think unfortunately in Japan I don't know if you've seen they have this epidemic of old people committing yeah. crimes to go to prison just so they have someone to talk to no, and I that is horrifying to me, mm-hmm. um, but it is happening, and not just a Japanese problem. It's in countries with growing populations, like the UK and Germany, and the Scandinavian countries. So I think if we can move away from this idea that karate can only be for super athletic people, can only be for talented people, and we move towards dojo as being very inclusive spaces for people of all ages and all abilities, I think. And I think that's the original intention. When you look at um, Funakoshi's book, Mm -hmm. he talks about how he was like small, weakling, uh, very unhealthy, but karate gave him purpose and gave him a community. And they often talk about it in their books and essays that karate should not be about federations. It should not be about the ranks. It should not be about the titles. But I think we've gone so far away from that to the point where a lot of people have drunk this Kool-Aid idea of, well, if you're not a Sheehan and you don't have, you know, titles and tournaments, who are you as instructor? Hmm. But, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's the price of popularity. You can see that. Absolutely. Good example is uh, BJJ, right? They've been holding yeah. up standard and now it's all going down the hill because more people have got the power, easy way to make, yeah. let's sell the belts. Let's oh, sell. yeah. And somebody's got a yacht, right? Mm-hmm. So... 
this is the price of popularity and, and karate was a bit higher than BJJ. So in seven, yeah. boom, and then it's decrease of the quality, wondo, judo, everything. It's more popular you are, the more people try to abuse it and make a business on it. So Yeah. No and, and like as like you said, you know, it's not regulated in the UK, so it's even easier to start your little own McDojo and run away. You could get away with it for a while, um, but then you have to move. Yeah. Sorry, break you up there. Um, but you know, on the on the subject of McDojos, um, I was really against McDojos, but recently I'm changing my mind a little bit um, because I'm providing service as well, uh, and I think most of the people now can do research and know what they're signing yeah. up for. If they just want a hobby with kicking, jumping, and being in pajama, why not? It does. <laughs> It does help them. Why not? Yeah. Um, so you know, I decided that instead of looking what other people do, I just focus on myself, do my yeah. stuff. And if somebody in the McDojo, good for them. If it's not uh, misselled and ill intent, I don't have a problem with this. Yeah, I have a little cousin in the UK who is up with a little. Uh, I I'm not gonna. I look at it, I'm like, oh, shame. You know, he loves it so much, so I'm not going to take it away from him. But, like, I wouldn't send my son to that dojo because I don't even know what kind of mismatch style it is. But it makes him and his mom happy. And it's not doing... We have a little with them. We hope to influence them in that short time. And they move on without us. The, the dojo is the lighthouse. Mm. We stay. They come and go like in the night. And if you're lucky, some people stay with you for many years. But they're the vast minority. You can't keep all your students, even if you wanted to, even if you could. You'd run out of space. Exactly. So this idea that, you know, Sensei is the lighthouse, and, you know, that which gives light must endure burning, as Viktor Frankl writes in Man's Search for Meaning. And that's, I think, some of the toll of on us as instructors and why we have to take care of our mental health, because... You know, I'm sure you feel that people come to you with their problems and even though you try to say, listen, you might need to speak to a professional about this, sometimes it's low-grade struggles and you want to help. But, you know, when 50 people are coming to you for help, your cup starts to empty. Yep. So it's very important, I think, for us as instructors to protect our own mental health. I see our friend in Kenya says karate helps me against reality is life experiences. Be kind. Yes, we do have to be kind to ourselves. Because yep. karate is where we get so... Accustomed to failure. Yep. This failure is, within a safe yeah, this is one structure. Of, one of the best things in karate is that uh, control failure. When you know you're going to... Mm. If you guide it properly, you know that you're going to be failing for a long time. But then one day you can look back all of those belts and say, look how I overcome. Absolutely. And that's kind of become a habit into the life that you start looking. And is again, I'm going to bring Danny again. Yes. You can see that change with him. When he wanted to be introduced to any new activity, he always said, "No, I don't want it. I don't want to swim. I don't want to yeah. do." It. And now he goes, "Okay, I give it a go. It's a challenge. Yeah. It's a challenge." So it becomes you after practice, like everything. It just becomes a habit and change your thinking. I really enjoyed Danny's essay um, in your book. Yeah, he's great. Um, <laughs> he's what a great kid. I'd love to meet him one day. Um, do you have? What, are you, what is your advice for working with autistic students? Because we occasionally get uh, one or two, and it is becoming more prevalent now as diagnostics get better. Mm. So how do you... It must have been very difficult in the beginning with Danny. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it was difficult. Uh, I had the support of his mum and brother because they've been training together. But it was mainly communication, you know. Is that okay for... Yeah. Yeah. That's not okay for you. No problem. We adjust, right? So for a beginning, he didn't train with anybody except me or his mom and dad. And gradually we started interviewing. And now he goes with us for seminars. But I ran a project with, we had the 14 uh, autistic children. And one thing I know mm -hmm. that uh, lots of parents put barriers in them. So we had a people, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, oh, you won't be able to do this. She won't be able to do that. They won't be able to do this. Okay, we had yeah. put in a dojo that we had a door and a glass screen and a coffee shop on the side. Mm -hmm. Parents out, you can watch me through the uh, yeah. screen. And suddenly kids can do everything they said they 
because it, absolutely, I think nobody, that's such good advice. Yeah, nobody's putting them down. Oh, no, you can't do it. That's too difficult for you. They had the fun. We managed to do mm. it with them and stuff like that through the you know clever or well, clever. I learned from people, so it's, I can't take credit for it. But you know, we take the picture and of the puzzles and go. You know, the winner is the one who can sit the longest looking at the picture and then giving the most details. So for some of autistic people, this is a, like a heaven, right? Because they can focus on the details and they remember. And they could sit up to a minute meditating, not knowing they're meditating. And the par- after six weeks, the parents said they see the huge difference in um, uh, children's behavior. So. Parents approach, um, and I understand, like as a parent myself, and you're also a father, um, we have blind spots when it comes to our own kids. Yeah. Um, my own son is very spirited, and I often don't sign him up for stuff because I think that people will be irritated by how spirited he is. Mm-hmm. But that's not fair. That's me putting barriers in his way. Um, and often because people are very dismissive of spirited kids, you know, they want compliant mm-hmm. kids. And I, I get that. I get that when you've got a class of 36 or 40, it's a lot to deal with. Yeah. So, but it, we also have like a glass barrier in our dojo where the parents can watch mm-hmm. and it gives them like the reassurance that nothing untoward is going on, but it gives their kids a chance to separate from them. Um, Shay is often told on the YouTube channel how his parents were kicked out the dojo when he was five mm. because he couldn't concentrate while they were there. And they never really came back to watch. They just kind of trusted the process and trusted sensei. I think we get sometimes caught in the middle with all the scandals of bad instructors and bad coaches. And although 90% of us are, are harmless, mm-hmm. unfortunately, mm-hmm. we have to work around not being perceived as being harmful to the kids we teach. Yeah, well, um, in the UK, we had quite a few cases. But what, what is troubling is that the people around know and just don't take any action, especially in the... That's the other thing. This, this is the very sad thing, so, you know. I, I couldn't... Uh, deal with it if I knew that somebody's abusing a child and just not saying it just to keep my reputation. I couldn't deal with it. Oh, some lovely comments. Go to place. Oh, well, hi, Minette. It's so nice to see you. One of our black belts popping in. Awesome. And yoga and mindfulness states. Jay, while we're on that topic, um, I see that Les has Taiso classes and let's talk about the benefits of your meditation, your classes. Now, I can't do meditation in my area because we're in a, a religiously conservative area. Mm-hmm. So people get very touchy about meditation. They think it's praying. Uh, any because it's part of that whole like racism from the East must be satanic or paganistic. Or mm-hmm. So unfortunately, I can't mindfulness and meditation into our karate practice as much as we like but tell me about how it's benefited your students and how you incorporate it in your types of classes uh, so I, I think people because we didn't say meditation people take it um, literally like a proper meditation so we yeah. don't do that we just um, go into a happy place when we do movements so, okay. so we, we go either try not think about anything or let the thoughts go in for a right mind Mm-hmm. But just enjoy the movement. Um, how it benefits people? Um, mainly physically, so because that's that group is from 70 to 100 years old, and you're just keeping them mobile. So you know, for yeah. going kata, they uh, improve their mobility in the shoulders, strengthening the leg. They can do now squats, nearly full squats. Half of them does full squats. Um, they say it's comes and down. Uh, mm. They enjoy the movement, and there is something magical with people doing katas without a word, and everybody yes. at their own speed. It's I don't know. It's mm. very comforting. It might sound very mumbo jumbo, but it's just mm. very, you know. We've got so we do a uh, 15 minutes of uh, like 10 minutes of warm up, about 25 mm. minutes of uh, doing kata in slow when I guide them, and then we've got the 15 minutes of doing kata your, your own, so we do usually tensho, but our tensho is a little bit modified for a more like tai chi way. So we're going to slow, oh, okay. slow motions, and then we've got the f- uh, five to ten minutes stretches. So you know, it's kind of like an all-around package, 
focusing mainly on the body, so they keep their densities. I've got 90% of women on that class, so we try to prevent the osteoporosis for them, body exercises, uh, flexibility, mobility, and that little bit of a, a head space for them. I'm cramped. Um, I would love to be able to offer um, such a class at one of the old age homes around here. Um, it's actually something that I think um, should be part of a um, meditation. Absolutely, it does help to hope, focus on the explanation. Relax. I love doing it, but I can't. Well, I haven't figured out how to incorporate it. But what was I saying? Oh, I think it would be nice if as part of someone's black belt grading, they did offer some kind of community service. So, mm -hmm. you know, as part of your black belt grading for that year, you have to at least do one class a month. Um, the brown belt can teach, you know, function. But to, then you, um, you have to take in consideration on everybody is a teacher. So I, that's I the thing. Very few people are. Yeah, I've got the issue with that, you know, oh, you need to teach so, teach so many lessons, uh, produce so mm -hmm. many students. Um, not everybody is geared for that. I've got... Very few. He's got second down and he has no interest in teaching and he's getting really stressed in front of the people, adults. I don't see the reason why he should be put in that. You know, it's just not area of his interest. He doesn't feel like it. He's got too much in life. He can be black belt as well. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I think there needs to be space for all kinds of black belts. Um, mm. I do think it's important sometimes to encourage people to stay on one. Yeah, yeah. Um, because also to teach is to learn twice. Yeah. So maybe not teaching all alone, far away from the dojo and the comfort of sensei. But mm. even just that one-on-one -on -one in the dojo, that's how our Noah and our dojo, who I am so, so proud of, uh, he's gone from being the shyest kid you've ever met to now being like confident and he could take warm-ups and it's and that just started with me saying to him hey why don't you take this brand new little white belt under your wing show them how to punch and block for the next 10-15 minutes and then you come back to the class and that alone uh, that's the special part of being a sensei is the people you chase it's about uh, like a nice bonus like you have mm. got a third dance I know mean, that third Dan, so that I'm, you know, if something happens, touch wood to share, I don't have to go and because that's part of the teaching licenses in South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, to run an independent dojo, you need a third Dan. Yeah. A considered instructor's grade. And um, for the regulation we have. So, yeah. Um, for, for sure, taking people out of comfort zone is the good thing. We, we all like yeah. to see bubbles and do nothing, but then. You try and you assess, right? Some people are geared for teaching, others not. Yeah. Now, some people are terrible teachers. Um, you know, there's like, we always say, there's, there's, uh, if you're lucky, you have all three. Practitioner, teacher, and administrator. Mm, yeah. Very few people have. I'm a good teacher and a good administrator. But practitionally, I'm decades behind Shay. <laughs> and he's an amazing teacher and practitioner, but he's shocking at admin. Yeah. They're not also a narcissist because our field attracts lots of narcissists. <laughs> um, anything where you've got a power differential, unfortunately, whether it's nursing or teaching or oh, yeah. coaching or policemen, unfortunately, you're going to attract psychopaths. And it's our job in the field to weed them out before they get into too much uh, trouble with students. Yeah. That's really appreciate what um, what's his name over at McDojo Life does. Yeah. is showcasing these instructors and putting their faces on the internet so that if they try to open another dojo, we're like, but, oh, I looked you up, and guess what? Mm. You know, you got caught touching your students. Although, so, although, um, although he's a brave man. Sometimes Rob puts stuff which are, which are out of context, and mm. especially on these short short things. So I wonder when yeah. my karate for mental health is gonna be there with the, look how shocking they don't touch each other. Well, well, that's true. <laughs> So breaking up. Sorry, we broke. Yeah. Can, oh dear. Can you, you repeat? Too. Sorry. Um, 
So is there anything you want to chat about in terms of further karate mental health? Any questions? Any questions anyone's got in the comments? So we've got 15 people online. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Um, and I've, I know like our Americans will come on. That's our biggest demographic for our channel. Um, they'll all come online in about two, three hours and they'll watch the live stream. But Liz, as always, it's been such a pleasure chatting to you. Um, I love picking your brain and sharing thoughts across the world on something we're both very passionate about. Thank you. Yes, and congrats again on the book. And you've inspired me to, to start work. I don't know what I'm going to work on, but one day I'll get around. I'm sure. Maybe when my kids are bigger. Yeah. They're five and one, so it's a bit of a hectic age. Yeah. Mine are seven and, and four. Seven and four? Yeah. Yeah, so you're in the trenches of parenting. Yeah. Okay. You know, the, <laughs> you can't sit down. You can't go. The four-year-old, is. it gets a little bit easier. You're getting out of the rough period. I'm just starting it all over again. Well, I'm turn, but it's fine. I'm turning into the taxi driver at the moment. So, you know, after this, ah. me there, this club, that club, and stuff. But <laughs> you're congratulating me all the time. I would like to congratulate on the super great ah. YouTube channel. Because you explain. Thank you. Compared to last time we've been chatting. And I do watch your videos. I, I know, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, someone just said, why must the senses or privilege the physical and not the mental part? Jay, that's a great question. I think it's because uh, the physical is not a so vulnerable thing. People feel very vulnerable when they embrace the mental part of trading, and that's when you come up against... I mean, you can always train to be bigger, stronger, and faster. I think mm -hmm. that's quite straightforward. Um, but the mental part... You're right, that is the most challenging. Like Sanshin, as a cutter, for example... Is physically demanding, but mentally to do perform that cutter properly mm. is exhausting. Mm. And our attention spans are like now yay long. Um, I, I was teaching teens the other day, and every five minutes, like, hey, 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 look here, look at me. Mm. It's not TikTok, okay? Mm. I'm talking for longer than 20 seconds. <laughs> look at me. So I think, yeah, the mental part actually does need to be privileged more because that's our long term growth. I, Eventually, your body's going to give out. I think the problem is that. Uh, all over the world, it's still that bit of a stigma. You know, you break your leg, you yeah. go to doctors, you've got a problem with mental health, you avoid talking to, about it, right? So that's why yeah. how the character for mental health started. So we try to um, promote that uh, talk about uh, mental health, right? We live mm -hmm. as a martial artist, as a tough people, macho people. And if we need to show to other people that if we can talk about it without problems, then everybody. Yeah. Right, and then there's a great book actually. I'm gonna feed Ian Abernathy, who wrote the uh, Mental Toughness. So he's uh, yeah. explaining how to uh, kind of build up resilience. You have to, uh, you have to get out from the comfort zone and you know talk to people and do stuff. In the UK, primary school applies mindfulness. Oh, wonderful! That's so lovely to see. Yeah, they do. That's a great move. I think wonderful. I think cool as well, but yeah, most most do something towards that. Um, question, Sensei Les, does Fair Fight Netherlands get involved in mental health? So I've got my big computer screen here. Um, so <laughs> it's inception. Um, uh, Mary, Mary is involved in supporting us. Uh, I'm not sure if they do in India. I think they incorporate definitely a um, self-confidence and building up the girls there. They're doing a fantastic work in there, and, and we are yeah, close, that's amazing. close friends with Mary. Um, and yeah, they're doing a fantastic job. And I think the part of her teachings is building up the uh, mental resilience of those girls because, you know, we live, at least me in UK and in Poland, I never imagined what we in India going through, especially girls. And it's just, you know, the essential work she's doing there. And all kudos to her. I think I must connect with Mary Stevens because she sounds like yeah. she's on the same kind of journey I am. I, um, I'm trying to, through my own charity, um, Martial Arts, I want to work on period poverty in martial arts in South mm -hmm. Africa um, because it's a topic very close to my heart and it's shocking that girls, you know, have to miss karate. Yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm going to try to get her details from Sensei Les and after this. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of girls missing karate in school because for want of a pad or a tampon, which is shocking. Mm. In what world mm. is this not distributed for free? You yeah. know, um, mm. condoms are free. But, I mean, even just fighting the, all the ignorance around it, um, 
Ah, uh, thank you, Minette. We missed you so much. Oh, Mia. Hi, Mia. Also one of my dojo adults. So lovely to see you online. That's why we love having you in the dojo. This is also my fellow tattooed mom. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I would love to see um, more education about how girls have to struggle. And it's something I think that's an important with you as a male ally. And Shane, may he rest in peace, Essence Angel Lemus. Um, he was a big feminist advocate for karate. I'm actually going to write my article about that for his memorial issue. Uh, but yeah, these are battles I think and this is an important role karate has to play. It's so, so much more than medals at a tournament. Like, I, I, I it's the least important aspect of karate for me, um, whereas we're here to change lives and make a difference. And, yeah, I, I get so you. These are nice, but I, I get you connected with Mary because it's well worth it having her online. Yeah. And she's involved in uh, 500 Rising. Okay. Um, that's a really good program for um, self-defense for women. Fantastic. I can't remember who the leader of it, but she will know. Yeah. I'm not in a self-defense circle, so but it's well worth talking to her. I will. We'll do something cool together. Yeah. Isn't the internet great for all of its flaws? Like 20 years ago, we couldn't have had these connections across the world. Like you did karate in your country and you lived and died there. But now we... Yeah, it is. I met all the people I've met through YouTube and through the internet. Mm. And... Mm -hmm. the changes I get to make through something I never thought I'd do. I studied to be a copywriter. Mm -hmm. So here mm -hmm. I am. I ran away from advertising. <laughs> okay, Liz, we're running. In mm -hmm. you I better get the kids, both of them. Yeah. As you could see the 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 black belt the back bag under my eyes matches my black belt. <laughs> yeah, I know that lack of sleep sleep is a killer. There's one day that I'll sleep, but just not yet. Yeah. Hey. All right, Liz. Thank you for and thanks to everyone who watched who checked in. And um, thank you for your lovely comments. We so enjoy seeing your comments, and you know it's. his page you could go to i think it's um mental health as well as well, what are your other facebook pages uh so it's uh, basically if you put less book everything's gonna come up but the page is creative for mental health, is creative for mental health. that's Not the one and you. we will check soon put this up with keep thank it up thank you Yes. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.